The 2016 season is over, so today we're going to take a look at my starting lineup for the 2017 racing schedule. <laughs> The 2016 season was great. The 2017 season is going to be even better. We have more pilots and newer hardware than we've had before. For this season, I'm going to be flying these three quads primarily. This is my X210. This X210 has been serving me very, very well in all the races and it also comes as a build kit from Banggood and this thing is easy to build and it's easy to add the FPV gear and there's the body is big enough that it's a little bit... Uh, a little bit beyond just a beginner quad with too much room and I'd say there's just enough room inside this frame to put all your components inside of it. This isn't this is a bind and fly quadcopter. This is the Crusader from uh, Diatone. This has a five millimeter plate and the thing that makes this quad special are these Diatone motors they put on here. They say they're 2450 kV, 2480 kV motors and these things will haul even with these 5045 props this thing is fast and the five millimeter main plate you think would add too much weight for this quad but even with the five millimeter plate this thing is still plenty fast and down here in my third runner up in my, in my squadron here this is the whippet frame from detroit motors this is a stretched x where it's a little bit longer from front to back which gives you a little bit more pitch control and not and it makes the uh turns with the aileron a little bit faster because the motors are closer together this also is well designed out it has plenty of room for all the components in here. Even if you're out of wiring, you can make this one work. On the back here, I have my video transmitter and the uh, buttons are out here. It's easy to see what channel I'm on, easy to change channels, and everything on here just pretty much has its place. For control, nothing beats the Tyrannus. The Spectrum transmitter, guys, sorry. This Tyrannus is way better in my opinion. It has the ability to do t telemetry with most receivers out of the box without setting anything up. For your RSSI, it also has the ability to do battery voltage um, tele telemetry and a host of other things with the smart port when all that stuff is integrated into the uh, beta flight and clean flight software. So for me, there's nothing better than the Tyrannus. For my batteries, I pretty much have two go-to brands. The first brand I usually go to is the Bonka battery. This is a 1375C battery. This one has served me well and uh, the, the nice thing now, Bonka came out with a new line called Panda Batteries, and I'm still looking to get my first one of those, but this Bonka battery here will not give up, and neither will the other ones that I have, so until these die out, I'm not getting the Pandas, but the Pandas are supposed to be a lot better. A couple of my friends have run them, and they say they're even better than the Bonkas. Now, beyond the Bonkas, I've been using these graphene batteries. This is an Infinity battery from Banggood. This has shown up in a lot of battery performance reviews, and it shows up as not being the best graphene battery, but it holds its own. It does a little bit better than a normal battery on in terms of voltage sag. This will hold itself a little bit better than other ones will. The last one I have is the Infinity 1500, and I like this one just because it has a little bit more juice inside of it, and it'll help me on the longer flights uh, a little bit better or more so than the uh, 1300 batteries. When it comes to goggles, there's not much that can beat the Fast Shark goggles. These are the HD3 Fast Shark goggles. I just picked these up not too long ago. And they, uh, for these, I put in a Diversity Real ACC uh, receiver. Now, this receiver is by far better than the single receiver that I had before. I love this because I can look at this little screen and I know exactly what channel I'm on and I'm not just guessing and hoping that I'm on the right channel. And this has turned out to be nice because I can also check other people's channels and make sure that they're on the right channel at the races so that way we have a little better chance of everybody flying well at the races. But these goggles have been awesome so far and I attribute a little bit of that to the receiver and I attribute most of it to the optical lenses that are inside here. The little LCD screens that are in here are the sharpest that I've ever seen in any Fast Shark goggles. Now on the cheaper side of the scale, I guess, or the range, these are the Eosheen EV800s and these are by far my favorite not Fat Shark goggles that I've come across. I used the head place for a while when my Fat Sharks were being re uh, fixed but these Eosheen goggles worked real well uh, and they have a sharp screen inside of it. The front of this also detaches off and has a tripod mount on the bottom so you can use it as a standalone screen if you want and it ha the, only, the only downside that I have about these goggles. Well, another cool thing is they have a search button here on the side and they also have a band and channel so you can you know, manually select the one you want. But like I said, the bad thing about them, the only thing I don't like 
is that they charge off this DC 5 volt and it's just a real small little pin. And so the battery is built inside here so you don't have any battery out here, which is actually what I like about these. But the thing I don't like is charging with this little pin. I wish they had a full size 12 volt adapter so I could plug in an external battery to charge the internal battery or plug it into a charger to charge the internal battery. Other than that, I think these goggles are very good cheap alternative to the Fast Shark goggles, the Eoshim EV800s. This is the MM130-0 quadcopter. And for a quadcopter with three inch props, this has been my favorite quad. I don't think it's nearly the fastest because of this extra frame, it weighs a lot. But I tell you what, when you get hit in the air and this thing goes rolling on the ground and you tell someone, just kick me over and they flip you over a level, you can take off and keep flying. There's not much that can damage this carbon fiber or this little standoffs. And if you have a head-on collision with someone else, your quadcopter or this quadcopter is going to win. I had a, we had a little practice session here a few days ago and I ran into two different people with this and both times I came out alive and was able to pick up and just get flying again, only had to be flipped back over on, my, on the top so I could get up. I think the 2017 season of quad racing is going to be awesome. I think we're gonna see a lot of changes coming in, mostly HD video. I think we're gonna start seeing more and more people show up at races with that. One more thing, I'm gonna give a shout out to School and Drones. He designed this battery strap uh, protector. You put your, it's mostly designed for 1300 size batteries. You put this on your quadcopter. This is the front over here. And you slide your balance lead inside here, put the battery down, and it straps onto the bottom of your quad. And the one thing it allows you to do is to uh, set your quad down on a level surface such as this or you can put it up like this and it gives you about a 30 degree pitch to uh, take off a little bit faster. So when your props start to spin, you're immediately moving forward and you don't have that lost momentum of up and then forward. Skull and Drones, this thing's on Universe. Download it, print one for yourself. This thing's pretty awesome. Anyway, the 2017 racing season is upon us. Get your quads ready. Get any questions you have down in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. If you want my recommendation on what you should be flying, these are my top three quads for now. And I like them. I think you would too. And if you don't want to build your own, this is the one you want to build. You want to get the Diatone Crusader GT2. If you want to build your own, the X210 is a great one. Also, the Whippet, X2, uh, the Whippet frame is also great. That's a nice kit and it all comes together for you except for the FPV stuff. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to help you out as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.